Okay, uh, so this week we will cover uh, another type of the machine learning model, so which is unsupervised machine learning model. Actually, specifically, we will talk about the clustering, um, and also we will talk about TCA, so principal component analysis. So principal component analysis, we mentioned this one uh, somewhere be earlier uh, during this semester, so that can be used to either reduce the number of the features, okay, um, and also well maintain the, uh, the explain, explanation power of our data set uh, so that we can reduce the dimensions. And also sometimes it is also great, so if you want to visualize the multi-dimensional, high-dimensional data set, so because uh, we can only visualize two or three dimensions at the same time, so if we have, let's say, uh, 500 features or 500 dimensions, and we can use, we can visualize those data by using the after principle analysis. Okay, uh, so as we all know that we have actually three types of the machine learning. Uh, so we have supervised machine learning, so that we spend the most time of this uh, semester, like classification, it can be used for classification and also regression. For supervised machine learning, so we do have the, the right answers. Okay, so those model like Naive Bay, Neural Network, uh, Deep Learning, Decision Trees, etc. So all the models that we have learned so far are supervised uh, uh, models. Uh, we also have the unsupervised machine learning models. So that means that only we, know, we only know the input data and we don't know what are the labels, so we don't have labels. So that is unsupervised machine learning. So um, it is also a very important technique uh, in machine learning, and we all see that uh, uh, immediately. And finally, so we also have the reinforcement learning, which we don't have time to cover in this cluster, uh, in this in this semester. Okay, uh, so. Unsupervised machine learning. So the most common format is called clustering. So in the clustering, so each input is a vector in this n-dimensional space or in this d-dimensional space. Okay. Uh, so for example, here uh, we know that we have the house price and also the year that has been built. So those are the two dimensions. So two input. Okay. And suppose that we um, we want to classify or we want to group the houses into uh, into different um, categories or into different segments. Okay, so our goal is to identify the clusters of similar inputs. So they, uh, they have the similar features, which means that uh, if you remember from the nearest neighbor, uh, a model in this neighbor model KN, you, you know that the similar features means that uh, all the sample points are close to each other in this d dimensional space. Okay, and so this will be the output of the clustering. So we all see that okay, here we um, based on the those two dimensions, so the building and also the house price, we classify the data into this three category. So the first one, which are uh, expensive houses, and also the second, second group, uh, which are uh, moderate, and also the last category of the last group, which are the cheaper, uh, the cheapest houses. So that is what clustering can tell us. So we no longer have those labels, uh, but instead we are going to group the data into the similar um, segments. Okay, all the similar, uh, the same clusters where they have the similar features. Okay, and um, k-mean clustering uh, is uh, one of the most, the simplest one, and also it is widely used and clustering algorithm. So where the k stands for the number of the clusters that you want, and also the number of the means that you want. So you have to specify the number of clusters in advance. So for example, if you want five clusters, and you just set the uh, the key equals five. And the goal is that we want to put 
uh, all the points into a way that the distance uh, from each point to its assigned means will be minimized. Okay, so for example, here we have, let's say, uh, some uh, in this two dimensional space, so we have those uh, sample points, and ideally, we should have three clusters, and for each cluster, we have the mean. Okay, so th those are the central point. And ideally, so for the distance between each single point to its mean, so we want to minimize those distance. Okay, so minimize the, the, the total sum of the squared distances. And the step is actually pretty simple. So first, we choose k random centers, okay, which are in the uh, d-dimensional space. And we assign each point to the mean that is closest, okay, to which it is closest, okay. And, and next, we'll have those uh, k clusters. So for each single cluster, we recalculate the means, okay, we recalculate the means. And next, we compare that if the new means are same uh, to the, our initial means, so our initial clusters, so our initial random case. And in most cases, it will not. So uh, if, if the means are the same, then we stop. And if not, then, then we'll go, to, go back to step two, and we will, recap, we will assign the, each point to their, to their new means. Um, and we recap the means, and also we, we say that if the mean has been changed or not. Okay, and let's see an example. So here, let's say we have those input data. Again, let's say in, um, uh, here we have the two-dimensional space. Uh, we don't have any labels because this is an unsupervised learning. And we set three means because suppose that we want case to three, so we randomly set three means. So those three randomly means, and we know that those are not the best means. And we assign the points to their closest means. For example, those um, green points assigned to this cluster because they are close to they are closest to this uh, green triangle, and also those are the second cluster. Uh, red ones, and also this is a third one that is uh, blue ones. Once we have those clusters, we recalculate the means. So here we can see for this cluster, the mean is this one. For the green cluster, the mean is this one. And also for the red cluster, we know that the mean is this one. And the next, uh, we are seeing that if uh, the means has changed, and uh, yes, it has changed, uh, and so we are reassign uh, for each means we reassign those uh, points. So, uh, for example, for the uh, for the blue ones, uh, there is no change because the mean is still within that group. Uh, for the for the green ones, we can see okay. So those points used belong to the right clusters. Now they are assigned to these green ones because they are closer to these new means. Okay. And we will calculate that one multiple times. So each time, if we have new means, we will reassign those. Uh, we will reassign the point to their uh, new means again, and we repeat that one multiple times until we reach a point that the means will not change. Okay, so until we reach a state point, a stable um, point that the mean will not change, and in that case. Uh, we will stop, stop there, and we'll use those means. Okay, we'll we accept uh, that as the final result.